Now I want to define something known as an abelian group. A group G with a binary operation star is abelian if for any elements A and B that are in the group G, A star B equals B star A. And that's just the commutative law. So really this is saying that the binary operation star is commutative. So let's look at some of the groups that we've already discussed. We have the set of complex numbers under addition, that's abelian. Set of complex numbers under multiplication, that's also abelian. How about the set of real numbers under addition? That's abelian. And how about the set of real numbers under multiplication? That's abelian. Okay, so so far it's looking like we have a lot of abelian groups here. In all of these groups, the binary operation is commutative. How about the set of integers under addition? Abelian. And how about the set of rational numbers under addition? That's also an abelian group. How about Zn under addition mod n? Abelian. And how about nz under addition? That's also abelian. And how about the set of non-zero complex numbers under multiplication? That's abelian. And how about the set of non-zero real numbers under multiplication? Abelian. And how about the set of rational non-zero numbers under multiplication? Abelian. Okay, so you might start thinking, okay, maybe all groups are abelian, or most of them at least. Uh, but there are a lot of examples of non-abelian groups. And if you think about it, where do we see something that's not commutative? And one of the most common uh, areas that you see that in is with matrix multiplication. So maybe we can do something where we try and make a group out of matrices with the binary operation being multiplication, and that should give us a non-abelian group. So let's try and do that. So let's consider the set of all matrices with real entries under matrix multiplication. Is this a group? Well, there's a bit of a problem here. Consider the matrix, uh, I don't know, how about one, two, three, four, okay? And then consider this matrix. How about one, two, three, uh, negative one, zero, two, and four, one, negative five. Okay, these are both matrices with real entries, but this is a two by two matrix, and this is a three by three matrix, and if we're gonna multiply them together, well, if we're gonna multiply them in this order, this two would have to be the same as this three. Those dimensions would have to be the same, and they're not. And if we tried to multiply them in the other order, it still wouldn't work. The dimensions also wouldn't, wouldn't match up. So we have to place some additional constraints here. This isn't gonna work with just any old matrices. They need to be compatible as far as matrix multiplication goes. So maybe we could try something like this. The set of all n by n matrices with real entries under matrix multiplication. Okay, now do we have a group? Well, we still have another problem. Consider this matrix, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is a 2 by 2, so n by n. And these are real numbers, 0 is a real number. But what's the problem with this? Well, remember to be a group, we need to have an inverse. Okay, so I guess before we do that, the question is, what would the identity be? And if we're talking about two by two matrices, I think it's pretty clear that the identity matrix is gonna be the thing that has ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And that holds for three by three, it would be one, one, one along the diagonal, four by four, one, 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 and so on. Okay, that's the identity matrix. What am I gonna multiply this matrix full of zeros with to get the identity matrix. Like what matrix goes here that when I multiply it, I end up getting this. And I think you realize there's nothing, nothing's gonna work. Okay, so we need to get inverses involved. Now, how do we know if a matrix has an inverse? Well, if you remember from linear algebra, the inverse of a matrix exists as long as the determinant of the matrix is not zero. 
So we need to make sure that we consider only matrices with non-zero determinants. Okay, how about this? The set of all n by n matrices with real entries and with non-zero determinants under matrix multiplication. And indeed, yes, this is a group. It works. So let's show that. How do we know it's a group? Okay, so we want to show that the set of all n by n matrices with real entries and with non-zero determinants under matrix multiplication forms a group. So if it's going to form a group, we need to check the four properties. The four properties were closure, associativity, There has to be some kind of an identity element. And every element has to have an inverse. OK, so I'm going to do this a little bit out of order. Uh, some of these are easier to check than the others. Associativity. If I have a matrix A and I want to multiply that by a matrix B times a matrix C, it's true that you can move the parentheses around. You can do that A times B and then times C. So this works, associativity is all good. Um, I know this is not a formal proof, I'm just appealing to something that you know from linear algebra to be true. How about identity? Okay, so we're talking about n by n matrices, and I think I mentioned before that the identity element is going to be that thing that has ones along the diagonal and then zeros everywhere else. And it's the dimensions are going to depend upon whether we're talking about 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four or 5x5. Five five. Um, but the basic idea holds that works as an identity element. If you think about it, multiply any matrix by a matrix that just has ones along the diagonal, and you're going to get back the same thing. In other words, if I take a matrix A, multiply it by this identity matrix, and it doesn't matter what order I do that in, I get back the same matrix A. That works. Inverses, that's kind of given already because we're talking about matrices with non-zero determinants. So if I have a matrix A, that means there must exist an A inverse. If I have a matrix B, there must be a B inverse because both A and B have non-zero determinants if they're in the set here we're talking about. So that means that their inverses are in the set. So the only thing left is closure, and that's the only one that's a little tricky. We need to show that if I take any two matrices, A and B, that in order to be in the set here, this thing must have an inverse. In other words, I have to multiply A, B times something and get back the identity. The question is, what's going to go in here? Well, I know that if A and B are in the set, then A inverse and B inverse are in the set. So if you think about it, I want something that's going to kind of cancel them out. Well, how about this? How about if I put the B inverse here and then the A inverse here? OK, now associativity holds, so I can move the parentheses around. I just can't change the order of these things, because commutativity does not hold. So I can move the parentheses like this. So I have the B and the B inverse grouped together. That works. But the B and the B inverse, that's the identity. And the identity times anything is just the same thing. So that gives that. And A, A inverse, that's also the identity. So that works. I have closure. I have my four properties. So I have shown that this does indeed form a group, and in fact, it is a non-abelian group. So since we're talking about matrix groups here, there are a few other matrix groups and some notation that you should probably be familiar with. So in all the following, I'm going to let this R here represent either rational numbers, real numbers, complex numbers, or Z sub N. So we're going to look at the matrix group, the definition, and I'll ask, is it abelian? So the first one is this uh, M, which has an M by N, and we have the R, which the R, again, could represent any of those sets above. And this is just the set of all M by N matrices under matrix addition. Notice for addition, I can have uh, M by N, where M and N are not the same, and not have to worry about ordering, because uh, if they're all, as long as they're all the same dimensions, then I should be okay. 
Is this abelian? Sure, matrix addition is abelian. Doesn't matter what order I do it in. Okay, how about this? This is M, and then I have an N and an R. This is the set of all N by N matrices under matrix addition. So all I did now was just make them square matrices. And of course, that's also gonna be abelian. It's just a special case of the, the set above. G, L, N, R. Okay, so the G and the L stands for general linear. So this is the general linear group, and we would say of degree N. This is actually the one we just saw. It's the set of all n by n matrices with non-zero determinants under matrix multiplication. And uh, I'm, I'm not specifying, the entries are in this set R. So what this R specifies here, if this was complex numbers, then this would be matrices with entries in the complex numbers, n by n matrices with non-zero determinants under matrix multiplication. Is this abelian? Well, we just showed that no, it was not abelian. We know that matrix multiplication is not abelian in general, uh, or is not commutative. Uh, there are special cases, of course, where uh, A times B may equal B times A, but in general, that's not true. And then we have SL. So this is the special linear group. So the GL was a general linear group. SL is special linear group. And this is the set of all n by n matrices with determinants equal to one under matrix multiplication. And this again is also non-abelian.